to the geospatial revolution. In a world where everybody's texting, geospatial technology is critical to understanding what's happening at a particular location. It's the speed of the internet. It's the capability of remote sensing satellites. It's software like Google Earth. Taken all together, you have an explosion in the way we view the Earth. Everybody's somewhere, everything's someplace, and a map is a way of organizing all of that information. It's information from aircraft, from satellites. It can be collection of information from a tower that you've set up. We've been using maps for hundreds and hundreds of years to know where we are. Now that nice lady tells me which way to turn. Turn right, then turn left. Virtually all of the information that you're sharing with anybody these days has some kind of geospatial tag on it. There's really the human element. There's basically this entire information ecosystem that we have access to now. I can receive information, I can transmit information, I can broadcast my location, and that is revolutionary. It's amazing. It's cutting edge. It's, well, changing the world. Portland has invested in geospatial technologies because it saves us money, it improves our services, our relationship with the people that we're here to serve. We created Portland Maps to give easy access to citizens for crime data, transportation, property information, where all the pipes are, the utilities, all sorts of information. We like the fact that the general public can get access to all of the types of data that we see here at the city. Our system is called Transit Tracker. We were one of the first in the country to implement computers and GPS on board all of our buses. We've got this centralized database and all this information and real-time location of the buses is available for everyone through the internet and our customer service department. What time are you thinking of? Because of that, we're able to build mapping applications that allow better informed decisions. We can see that the number 15 is due to arrive in nine minutes. We can also turn on six inch aerial photography. We also have links to Street View so that people can know what to expect. Let's pull up more detailed information about that stuff. For instance, crosswalks, curb cuts, lighting, if someone has a disability. Knowing if there's a crosswalk or a curb cut there is very important. Because of civic apps for Greater Portland, our mayor challenged us to create a way for mobile users to catalog issues around Portland. PDX Reporter is an app that anyone can install on their mobile phone. We have some graffiti. You can take a photo of it and send it in with the GPS coordinates. Suddenly I had tens of thousands of eyes and ears because of PDX Reporter. It gives us good feedback in real time that's geographically coded and therefore useful for us to follow up on. As soon as I submit the report, I'm actually able to get back a detailed status of where this incident is at in the city's system. The Bureau of Planning and Sustainability does long-range planning to inform future development or redevelopment. What do we want the city to look like in 25 to 50 years? There's an awful lot of analysis. You have to address economic development, you have to address housing, you have to address environmental issues, etc. We couldn't do any of this without GIS. For the first time, we have a 3D building model for the whole city. The city has set a goal that 90% of all Portlanders will live within walking distance of most of the things they need by 2025. It's really resonated with the public. So we did a statistical analysis of the areas that are not 20-minute neighborhoods. They don't have any sidewalks, or the terrain is too steep, or there's no transit here, or there's no grocery store. So there's all sorts of things that we can answer now because we can overlay all of this data one on top of the other. I think our investments improve the way that we perform our work as a city government. It just makes good business sense.
Six years ago, many neighborhoods had alarming rates of obesity-related conditions like heart disease and diabetes. Six years ago, this city had fewer supermarkets per person than almost anywhere in America. If a mom wanted some fresh fruit for their kids' lunch in this community, she would have to navigate public transportation with big bags of groceries just to feed her kids. That would not be a big deal if most of us had vehicles, but most of us don't. People had to shop at corner stores. Their food was horrible. They had to buy things that wasn't nutritious for the kids. So that's how we set on the path to get a supermarket in this community. trying to figure out ways that supermarkets might be able to come back into neighborhoods. Here at the Food Trust, we developed GIS maps to describe problems in the community to stakeholders. We see where different factors overlap, where the supermarkets were and weren't, where the people were and weren't, and then you overlay in poverty or a lack of poverty and diet-related disease. And then, voila, there's our space that we really need to target and policymakers and community members could really get a look at where we should really focus our effort. Having a very clear graphical presentation really helps you get these projects done. The Food Trust said, hey, there's a legitimate need here. And as soon as possible, we opened the first store. This has opened up a whole world for us bringing up young people to teach them how to shop, how to deal with nutrition and to be healthier, and healthier children do better in school. And it's just a wonderful thing. You all took a stand, a really important collaborative stand. If you can do it here, we can do it in underserved communities all across this country. You could throw a lot of statistics at it. But there's something about seeing a map that speaks to people, especially policymakers, seeing highlighted in red your neighborhood as an area of high need. Projects are being funded, stores are being built because of this initiative. That should really raise the bar for other states wanting to know, well, what can we do? I believe that we're at the point where technology that's been growing over the last three decades is now ready to explode. New people, new organizations are building applications we've never thought of before. Geography is now all about technology that's going to help make your life better. Data is out there, the maps are available, and we as regular people can understand and take advantage of that. I think the idea of people really knowing the whole planet as well as they know their own neighborhood is going to transform what it means to be a human.